Good afternoon. My name is Carol Peterson, and I'm with the Office of the Chief Administrative Officer. Welcome to today's second briefing on the DC Health Link Exchange. Before we begin today's briefing, I would just like to bring your attention to a few items. First of all, if we do need to evacuate the building, we have exit signs that are clearly marked, and CBC staff will escort us to the appropriate areas. We ask that you silence your electronic devices during the presentation. Upon entering the auditorium, you should have received a gold folder containing an agenda, copies of today's presentations, and additional information from the Office of Payroll and Benefits. If you did not receive a copy, please see one of the CAO staff members at the end of the briefing for a folder. We are asking that you take only one, as additional copies will be made available at our open houses and drop-in sessions, and all of the materials in the folder are available on HouseNet at this time. We anticipate today's briefing will last approximately one hour and a half, depending upon questions. And speaking of questions, we do have a dedicated mailbox where those here in the audience and those who are watching via HouseNet can email questions. The address is myhealthcare at mail.house.org, I'm sorry, dot, dot gov. And when it is time for us to take the questions, we will be taking them, alternating between the emailed questions and those from here in our audience. Any questions that are not answered during the briefing will be answered by a CAO staffer, and those responses will be posted on HouseNet. Also, if you do have a question that is of a very specific nature for the, one of the health carriers that is, here, that is present here today, um, we will also be happy to make sure that they answer that question or the CAO staff or ask that question. If you are unable to stay for the entire briefing or view the entire briefing, it will be uh, rebroadcast on the House Intranet Channel uh, 33 uh, later tomorrow and then beginning next week as well. At this time, I would like to introduce Dan Strodel, the Chief Administrative Officer for the House of Representatives. Dan. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for attending. My name is Dan Strodel. I'm the Chief Administrative Officer of the House. I'm also the person who's been sending out crazy emails about this change. Uh, I do exist, and uh, thank you for your participation and your patience. I want to thank the Committee on House Administration, uh, as long, along with the Capital Visitor Center staff, uh, for allowing us to use this facility. Uh, and additionally, uh, the critical staff of the Committee on House Administration, uh, Kelly Craven, the staff director, and Kyle Anderson, the Democratic staff director, uh, have done a tremendous job helping us get the word out uh, throughout the House community, through the Chief of Staff Network, uh, so that we ensure uh, all House staff, including district office staff, uh, have all the information that's available uh, to make this uh, critical transition. The CAO, through the Office of Payroll and Benefits, serves as the agency level liaison with the Office of Personnel Management and the administration of employee benefit programs for House staff. Under the leadership of our Chief Financial Officer, Tracy Bobian, our Director of Payroll and Benefits, Catherine Logan, and our managers, Pamela Branch and James Butler, the Office of Payroll and Benefits has been working tirelessly on this project and will continue to do so through the open enrollment period. At this point, we are four days out from the beginning of open season, and I am so grateful that we are able to have representatives from three, the three critical entities that are implementing this change. The Office of Personnel Management, the DC shop, known as DC, DC Health Link, and of course, uh, the carriers that are participating in the DC shop. United Healthcare, Kaiser, Care First Blue Cross Blue Shield, and Aetna are here today. Again, this program is for all House employees, you here on campus and the folks across the country and in the territories. Each entity will make a presentation with a goal to provide as much relevant information as possible. OPM will go over the structure and components of the program. DC HealthLink will go over the enrollment process, access to plan information, and premiums as well. 
And finally, uh, the carriers will describe their plans that they are offering under the program. It's a lot of information. And we allotted time at the end for questions and answers. Open season begins next Monday, November 11th. This is also a federal holiday. Both DC HealthLink and our payroll office will have staff on hand should you have any questions. The CAO is happy to facilitate this meeting today. Thank you for attending and participating. At this time, I would like to introduce our panel. We have Alan Spielman from the Office of Personnel Management, Hannah Turner, DC HealthLink, Bonnie Norton, DC HealthLink, David Smith, United Healthcare, John Patrick, Kaiser Permanente, Rebecca Calhoun, Care First, Mike King, Aetna. We will begin with Mr. Alan Spillman from the Office of Personnel Management. Thank you very much, Carol. And uh, before I begin, I'd like to extend a special thanks to Dan Strodel and his entire team for the many, many hours they have spent with OPM, with DC HealthLink, working on all of the implementation details of the program you're about to, um, uh, to hear about. Their work has been invaluable to all of our efforts, so thank you very much. So my job is to give you an overview of the basic requirements, how the program will work, and what are some of the OPM resources that you'd have available as information and tools as you navigate. First, I want to start at the beginning, the, the law itself. And many of you know this, but there's a specific provision in the ACA that outlines that the only health plans to be made available beginning in 2014 to members of Congress and congressional staff are those created under the Affordable Care Act or those through a, an exchange. And the law goes on to define congressional staff as those individuals who are employed by the official office of the member of Congress. Well, OPM in early August issued proposed regulations to implement this. We got more than a few comments. We got 60,000 comments on our proposed rule, and we issued final regulations in early October. And those regulations, to boil them down, there's really three major provisions. First, the designation on who is employed by the official office is made by the members of Congress, or if they delegate and designate the administrative office to do that. It's not made by OPM. Second, for the government contribution to be available, the enrollment has to be with an appropriate small business health options program shop, and we've designated because Congress is located in DC, the Washington DC shop, DC Health Link, uh, as the appropriate shop. So if you choose to enroll in an individual marketplace plan, you will not get the government contribution. It's very important to focus attention on the DC shop uh, plans. Thirdly, under the regulation, congressional retirees have access to, the, they choose from the same plans as any other federal retiree. So what this means in practice going into 2014, the members who must choose, the individuals who must choose from the DC shop to get the government contribution are the senators, the congressmen, and those staff, those of you who have been designated as working in the official office of the member. Uh, this framework diagram illustrates an important piece here, which is the Federal Employees Health Benefit Program is the fundamental foundation for all of this. Because we have the Federal Employees Health Benefit Program, that enables us to pay a government contribution, an employer contribution, towards the cost of your premiums. And we're using the same exact formula for this coverage as we use for any other federal employee or retiree. It's a two-part formula. 
we take the lower of the two figures. One is a formula, this 72% of weighted average, that creates flat dollar amounts that we announce once a year in September for self only and for family coverage. And for 2014, those amounts are $426 for self and $948 a month for self and family. We have those figures on OPM.gov. You don't have to take them down. Those serve as caps to the government contribution, but otherwise we'll pay 75% of the premium of the plan you select up to the point where we hit this cap, in which case that's the maximum we pay per month and you would pay the rest if you select uh, a higher cost plan. So what this means is we now have two categories of health plans, the traditional federal employees health benefit plans, uh, and there's 256 of those offered by 97 carriers nationwide. And then we have the DC shop uh, gold level plans. There are 112 of those. And the reason why gold is the element here under the design of the shop an employer wishing to offer multiple options from multiple carriers uh, can, has to choose a metal tier level and then must offer all of the carriers and all of the health plans in that metal tier level. And as we look at the existing FEHB in terms of actuarial value, it, it is comparable to what the gold level is. So that's why gold is the level that you'll choose from. So as I said earlier, for that category of plan, senators, representatives, designated staff will choose among those 112. Uh, other federal agency employees, non-designated congressional staff, and all retirees, all retirees will choose among the 256 options available in, in what we can think of as the traditional FEHB. How will it work? I'll go over some key dates, the employer enrollment, the employee enrollment. Uh, Hannah will get into that in more detail, and I'll talk a little bit more about retirement. Uh, the employer setup is due prior to open enrollment. Dan mentioned open enrollment starts Monday. So the House and the Senate as employers are providing the necessary information, establishing the account, uh, and I'll say a little bit more about that in a minute, uh, but that's going on now. Open enrollment starts November 11th and ends on December 9th. The coverage becomes effective 1-1-2014, January 1st. You'll see payroll deductions for your selection in your pay in January. In December, you'll still be under your existing plan. So as I mentioned, the employer has to do the setup. Part of that setup is to take this list of designated staff, combine it with the members and the senators, roll it up into a census file that then gets uploaded into the DC HealthLink computer system. And that serves as the eligibility file for this program. And you'll see when Hannah presents how important that is in the process. Once that's done, when next week begins, you'll be in the full-blown open enrollment experience. Between now and then, you're sort of in a pre-shopping environment. There is information and tools available to help you get a sense of it, but you're not going to see the full experience, get the full sense of what your premiums would be for you, for your family situation until next week, and you can get on, on, the, on the site. You'll establish an account. You'll do a two-step shopping process. Uh, you'll spend most of your time on DC HealthLink website, but you'll also look at OPM.gov because we have this calculator that determines how much of the premium you pay versus how much the government contribution is. Uh, and lastly, you know, the plan selection. When you make your plan selection, you'll choose among those 112 plans. Provider network availability, you'll hear more from the individual carriers, but there is substantial network availability, not just in the Maryland, D.C., Virginia area, 
but nationwide and even in U.S. territories. And I've outlined at a high level uh, what the, each of the carriers provide and a number of their products. You'll be able to hear more of that in a few minutes. So lastly, retirement. As I said at the outset, current and future retirees will all be choosing among the FEHB, the 256 options I identified, will not be enrolled in the DC shop. So if you're enrolled in the shop and then you retire, then upon retirement, you would be selecting sort of a new plan and going back to the FEHB that you're most familiar with uh, before. Uh, because all of this coverage, whether it's under the 256 plans or the 112, is sort of under the umbrella of the FEHB, the time you spend with the DC shop coverage counts towards the eligibility rules for retirement. We have a rule that says essentially that you have to have five years of continuous coverage under the FEHB before you retire to carry your health benefits into retirement with a government contribution. And lastly, we have a number of resources, a number of links uh, to information. The next to the last one, there's a, there's a uh, Members of Congress webpage that has the premium calculator in it. Hannah will talk more about it. And then we have uh, the last uh, link is the FAQs. We have uh, more than 50 FAQs to answer a number of the questions that have come to us and that can serve as a good resource for you. So with that, I'll turn over the podium to Hannah Turner from DC HealthLink. Hannah. Thank you, everyone. So my name's Hannah Turner. I am the program manager for the Small Business Marketplace in DC HealthLink. I also have my colleague here, Bonnie Norton, She's the Director of Program Implementation and Policy for DC HealthLink. Um, and we're here to help uh, walk you through this employee application process, help you to understand what to expect when you um, go on to DC HealthLink and view plans um, and to compare your options, as well as to answer all your questions later on. Um, and I just want to say I do understand how important uh, this, these decisions are. I know there's a lot of things that are changing. And we're definitely here to help you all to understand what, we're, you know, what this new system will look like in 2014 with the coverage through DC HealthLink. I previously worked as a broker and actually in HR doing benefits administration. So I'm very familiar with this annual open enrollment process. And I know there's, you all are going to have lots of questions. So please uh, don't hesitate. So I want to give you guys a start off with just a quick um, explanation of DC HealthLink and our small business marketplace. For view at a high level, the plan choices that are going to be available for members of Congress and designated staff, and discuss the health plan rates and the employer contribution before going into the actual employee application and showing you the process. So DCHealthLink.com, that is an R, the district's health benefit exchange. It is a, private, a marketplace for private health insurance plans for individuals and families, as well as for small business. And I do want to make sure everyone is clear that there are essentially kind of two separate arms of DC HealthLink. For individuals and families, those are the folks who are going out, they're residents of the district, they are buying an individual policy, and they might be applying for premium tax credits or cost sharing reductions or other financial assistance programs. That is only in the individual and family marketplace. The small business marketplace is employer-sponsored coverage. Just like FEHB is, cover is uh, employer-sponsored coverage, this is um, coverage that your employer is offering, the um, tax rules, et cetera, you're going to pay through payroll deductions, all those types of things apply still. So it is, there's no premium tax credits in the small business marketplace versus the individual and family marketplace. And obviously, we're going to have members of Congress and designated staff in the small business marketplace here on DC HealthLink. So the plan choices for members of Congress and designated staff um, will be a choice of 112 gold plans in the small business marketplace. We have four different health insurance carriers, all represented here today, Aetna, Care First, Blue Cross, Blue Shield, Kaiser Permanente, and United Healthcare. And I know it was very important, as you can see, we have a breakdown by carrier of the number of plans that are available. 
but it was also important to highlight that um, only uh, half of our plans are just within the DC metro area, that's their provider network, but half of our plans have national network coverage. So for those of you here in the district, as well as those on the district offices, uh, I know that's very important for you all. And you'll see that all of the carriers do provide some plans that have some type of national network. Um, in addition, we have prepared a document that lists all 112 plans offered by all of the carriers. Um, that includes both the plan name, the plan type, whether the plan is an HMO, point of service, PPO, etc., and then their networks, whether they are a nationwide network or a DC metro area network, um, including if there's um, some of the plans cover all the states and all the territories. Some of the plans have uh, limited coverage in a few of the states. And so that all of that information is provided there. That'll give you a good starting point, but we definitely encourage you to go to the carrier's websites and look at their provider directories. I'll show you how you can do that on dchealthlink.com. And of course, if you have specific questions, call the carriers. They're the best resource to confirm that your doctors are in their network. Um, so health plan rates. So health plan rates are probably an, another big change here. And this is something that is required under the ACA that all the premiums for health plans offered through the exchanges can only be based on age and the number of people in your family. There is the option to have um, uh, premium variations for tobacco users. However, that is not permitted in the district. So it really is only age and number of people covered under your plan. Also, there's no separate geographic rating. So whether you are residing in here in the District of Columbia or you're at another state or territory, everyone's rates are based on DC Health Link rates. No, no different geographic rating is involved. So let's talk a little more about these age-based rates, member level age rating. So what that means and how that compares to what you're used to. So right now you're used to uh, paying one employee pays one amount for single coverage. And that doesn't change whether you're a 25 year old employee or a 55 year old employee. With the member level age rates, that 25 year old employee's rate will be one amount and the 55 year old employee's rate will be a different amount now. So every employee's ages rates are different. Plus for families now, there's not a set amount for families regardless of how many people are covered. So right now you're used to uh, maybe employee and maybe just a spouse covered under family coverage and someone else with five or six children and a spouse also covered, those people would pay the same thing under the current rules. Well, under the 2014 rules under the ACA, you would actually pay your family premiums are your um, employee age rate plus your spouse's employee age rate and plus the age rates for each of your children. So everyone's family rates would also be a little bit different. You do get a few exceptions to these family rates though. So if you have um, children under the age of 21, you only include the first three children in that premium, that family premium. So your fourth and fifth child are free in that sense. Um, and, but if you have children of the age of 21 through 26, you pay for all of them. So if you had five children age 21 through 26, uh, you would pay for all five of them. But if you had five children under the age of 21, you'd only pay for the first three. The additional two are, are included. So the employer contributions are going to be, as, as Alan described, based on the existing FEHB formulas. So that would be applied to whatever your individually age rated premiums will be for you and for your family members. And you're going to be using that OPM calculator. And I'll show you how you can use that um, when we get to that step in the application. So just a quick overview of the application process. As you know, open enrollment starts on November 11th on Monday and it ends on December 9th. Just a few steps for you to, um, do, to do your employee application. You're going to go to dchealthlink.com. You're going to create an account and you're going to create an account as an employee. And that's a very key point. We'll show you as we go along. Put in some basic information about you and your family members and then you'll be able to see the plans and decide and compare them and decide which plans you'd like to enroll in. 
I do want to point out that, that for the best experience on the website, we do recommend Google Chrome, uh, Firefox, Safari, or the very latest version of Internet Explorer. Um, the older versions of Internet Explorer tend to have problems with um, not only our website, lots of websites, unfortunately. So when you go to create an account, you're going to go online and you're going to, anywhere on the home page of dchealthlink.com, you're going to click on Apply Now. And you're going to get to a registration page. And it's important that you pick to register as an employee. Um, and you're going to create a, a user account. Once you've done that, you'll just log back in. You don't have to do it a second time. Um, for those of you, we do know some folks have been on our site since October 1st, trying to go look, sign up and, and look at plans. Um, and if you did that and you create an account as an individual and family, it's OK. You can use that same account going forward. You don't need to create a new account. But for anybody who's creating one now, you should be registering it as an employee. So when you do create your account, you're going to come to this home page and you're going to see a couple of options. And it's really important that you go scroll to the bottom of the page and you're going to see an option for applying for coverage offered by your employer. That is how you're going to get into the employee application. If you pick one of the other options, you will be shopping in the individual and family marketplace. Um, that includes if you just look to browse for plans, you're going to see a whole different set of plans other that it does not include the 112 gold plans that you're, you should be looking for. So make sure you um, pick that employer application and you should see um, at the top of your application, it should say employees across the picture of the, the uh, row houses at the top. Um, if you don't get there, you need to come back to this page and pick a different application. So the first step is to um, Tell us who you're applying for. Are you applying for just yourself, or are you going to be also applying for family members? It's very important that you apply, put all of your family members onto the application, regardless of whether you actually need to enroll them down the road. Because if you put them on the application now, before you go shopping for plans, you can pick which of those family members you actually want to shop for plans for. And you can come back and shop for them, and then say, oh, I don't need, my spouse doesn't actually need it. I, don't want to put them on, so then you can go back, take them off, and continue on. However, if you did not put your family members on your application at the very beginning, you actually have to start the entire process all the way back at the beginning and complete this application. You can't just do it as part of your shopping. So um, definitely put your family members on here, and later on you'll have a chance to decide who you actually want to enroll. So for your information that you're going to be entering in here as the employee, there's two very important pieces of data on this page. Um, your date of birth and your social security number. So as Alan said, your employers have uploaded a census of all of the members of Congress and designated staff who are eligible for coverage under DC HealthLink. And when you come in to apply, the system's going to look for those two fields, their date of birth and your social security number, and make sure that you're on that census. If there's a typo in there, then it's going to tell you that you're not eligible. So um, you want to be, pay close attention to those fields. Um, in addition, on here, you're going to enter your address. And this can be whichever address you would prefer to receive information from your plans from. So this could be your home address, or if you have split, um, if you live here as well as a, your home state, you could do that. Whichever address is appropriate. But I want to point out that by default, all of the notices that actually come from DC HealthLink are going to be electronic notices, and they're going to be in your My Account. If you'd like to receive them as paper notices as well as the electronic notices, you can check, you know, indicate that on this screen, but you, uh, and you'd still get the electronic notices as well. But you won't get paper notices unless you actually opt into that. So once you entered your information, you're going to enter your employer's information. We just need a name and a mailing address. So uh, for the U.S. House of Representatives, Washington, D.C., 20515. Uh, anyone can use that, that address, regardless of whether you are located in the District of Columbia or out of one of the district offices. Um, so we, what we, we actually then will verify that this is a valid address. So we actually ping the U.S. Postal Service. Um, and they're going to come back and say, <laughs> apparently, they are not particular. They don't seem to recognize the U.S. House of Representatives or the U.S. Senate's addresses, as I think uh, many of you may have experienced at times. So you're going to get a little warning message that says, we couldn't actually validate your, your employer's address or the, 
actually it's the U.S. Postal Service couldn't validate it. It is not an error message. It's just a warning, and we know that this is a given problem with the Postal Service and these addresses, so just click Next, and you can continue on. So um, if you have any questions about that, your benefits office can clarify as well. So then if you decided you wanted to, if you have some family members that you're going to be putting on your application, you'll do that here. You only need to enter their name, date of birth, and social security number. Um, you can enter as many as you want. You'll get a page um, for one person, and then at the bottom we'll ask you if you have any other people to add to your application. Just keep saying yes until you get to add as many folks as you need to. And when you're done, you just say no, that those are all of your family members. Once you've inputted all of their information, you're going to have to tell us the relationships between each of the people that you've put on this application. And we need that information so we can make sure that the people that you've put on there are actually people who are eligible for your coverage. So just like under FEHB, the only family members who are eligible are your spouse, your children, including your stepchildren and adopted children, and your foster children. When you get on the application, you're going to notice there's a lot of other relationships in that drop-down list. So you could put your uncle on, the, you know, on your application, but when you actually get to your eligibility, the system will tell you that that person is not eligible because of only these three um, family members are eligible. And that's basically it. You're going to get another chance to review your information, and this is where I want to stress again for you to double check the date of birth and social security number. It's very important that that information matches what um, your employer has uploaded. And you'll just um, do your electronic signature, and then you'll get your eligibility. So you have one of two things. Hopefully, we'll be in the first um, portion of the top portion of the page here, where it's going to say that congratulations, you're eligible. The U.S. House of Representatives offers 112 plans, um, and your coverage would begin on January 1st, 2014. You'd have an, a button that says "Go enroll in a plan," and then you'd start shopping. If, on the other hand, the date of birth and social did not match what the employer has uploaded, you're going to get a message that says that you were not found to be eligible um, for employer-sponsored coverage. It's going to tell you to go back to your employer because maybe the information that they uploaded or that you provided just didn't match. Um, maybe they are not offering coverage or in DC HealthLink. Um, or more importantly, it could be that their open enrollment period has not begun yet. So if any of you actually went on the DC Health Link um, starting on October 1st up, till, up until Sunday, um, if you go on there right now even and you fill an application, it's going to tell you that you're not eligible. But that's only because your open season hasn't begun yet. So you won't be found eligible until Monday would be the earliest. If you do get this screen um, from Monday or later, you definitely want to contact your benefits office and make sure that there's, um, you know, that your information is correct in the system. So assuming you're eligible for coverage, which everyone in this room will be, and uh, you're going to go enroll in a plan. So this is where you're going to start your plan shopping. And the very first thing you're going to be prompted to do is um, open the premium contribution calculator. So the premiums that you're going to see on DC Health Link as you're shopping for plans are going to be the total monthly premium for each plan. It is not going to include the employer contribution amounts. You're going to have to use this OPM premium contribution calculator in order to calculate what you will actually pay each month from your paychecks towards that coverage. So I'm going to show you how you're going to use that here. The top part of your screen, you're going to see a little sample. This is an overview of what a plan, this happens to be a United Healthcare plan. And the total monthly premium is $377.10. But that does not include the employer contribution. So in order to do that calculation, you open up your premium contribution calculator in another window or another tab of your browser, enter the amount into the field, and then you have to pick whether your coverage is self-coverage or self plus family. Um, and so if you're covering anyone other than yourself, you need to pick self plus. This happens to be self coverage. When you click calculate, you're going to get your results. So this plan is $94 a month for me if I were to enroll. And so you're just going to be kind of toggling back and forth between those two in order to come up with this contribution um, amount for what you will actually be paying each month for the coverage. So here's what it's going to look like when you shop for a plan. 
first page you're going to see is a list of 112 gold plan level plans from all four carriers. Um, you're going to see in the summary um, area, you're going to see the insurance company's name, the plan name, um, the provider directory links. So that will open up the directory links. You can go check those out on the carrier's websites. And it's also going to show you your deductible amount. And that deductible amount that's shown is actually will be either the individual deductible amount if you're shopping for a single person for just yourself, or if you're shopping for family members, it's going to show you the family deductible amount. So um, it will show the right amount based on who you're shopping for. In addition, if you're shopping for family members, you'll see your total monthly premium, but below that you're going to see the family cost breakdown. And that's going to be helpful because the way family premiums are calculated, it's the sum of your rate plus your spouse's rate and each of your kids' rates. So you can use that family cost breakdown to help see, okay, I'm shopping for all of my family members. Um, you know, if one of your family members doesn't, has access to other coverage and now you're seeing exactly how much they're adding to your premium, that information will be really helpful in helping you decide what, uh, you know, decisions to make for you and your family. So in addition, you can take this list of plans and you, it will by default be sorted by premium. So the lowest premium ones will be on the top. You can, if you wish to, so you instead have it actually sorted by deductible. So if you'd prefer a really low deductible plan, those would be at the top instead. Um, and you will notice at the top of this plan list shopping page is another link to this premium contribution calculator at opm.gov. So you'll have two different area, uh, opportunities to open it as you're going through the shopping experience on DC Health Link. And of course, you can always go directly to opm.gov. So once, let's say, you've narrowed your selection down a little bit, you can, actually, let me go back, you can actually check a box next to the couple of plans, and you can select to compare, compare your plans. <clears throat> so you can do up to three plans to compare side by side, and you can see the cost comparison, the provider directory links, um, and most importantly is the summary of benefits and coverage, and those links are right there at the bottom. So the summary of benefits and coverage is a uniform benefit summary um, that would, uh, all of the plans on DC HealthLink will have, will be using this um, SBC, but also if you're eligible for any other coverage, if your spouse's employer has access to other coverage, uh, if you're under 26 and your parent's em employer offers other coverage, these are standardized formats and it's a lot easier to compare plans now than um, it was prior to the SBCs. So I want to highlight just a few points on the SBCs that you should um, take note of when you're looking at them. So at the top right is where you'll see the plan type. So that's where you'll be able to confirm if it's a HMO plan, PPO plan, point of service, etc. Also on the first page, um, the deductible amount. This plan happens to have no deductible, but there are plans with a deductible to show you the individual and the family deductible amounts. And of course, the out-of-pocket limit. Um, and other important information, like whether you need referrals to a specialist. A little further down in the SBC, I want to add to highlight one area where um, for dental, uh, pediatric dental and vision coverage is included in all of the medical plans on DC HealthLink. So dental and vision coverage for children up to and including the age of 18 is automatically included in all of the medical plans. And some of the plans, not all, but some plans also include some adult dental services. And you should look for that in that excluded and covered services area. And that's where the carrier put additional information on some benefits that um, they, their plan might include that others might not, as in this case, this one included dental, um, adult dental um, benefits. So I just want to review a few kind of the big questions here. So when does your coverage begin? I think Alan touched on this, but it, it's really important. For your open season, if you're enrolling now for, through open season, your coverage in a, a DC HealthLink plan would begin on January 1st, 2014. And then for people who are hired after that, your coverage would begin on the first day of the month following your date of hire. Um, when can you change plans? The rules are the same as with the FEHB. 
The only times you're allowed to change your plan are during open season and if you experience a qualifying life event during the year, such as birth having, or getting married, um, you're allowed to add those dependents on or, and you can pick a different plan. There is one little difference though. You only have a 30 day window to report, to make those enrollment changes um, around that qualifying life event. So if you don't report your spouse, the, your new spouse after getting married until like three months later, um, you have missed your window for that qualifying life event enrollment. Um, so do you have to make payments to DC HealthLink? The answer is no. Because it's employer sponsored coverage, you will never be paying DC HealthLink. Your employer pays, your, pays the invoice for everyone and takes the payroll deductions from you for your portion of the premiums. You will never make a payment to DC HealthLink with the shop coverage. Um, in addition, um, you know, what type of privacy and uh, security do we have for the, inf uh, the information that you are providing us? We have multiple layers of security from an IT perspective, including data encryption and network monitoring. Um, and the uh, security and privacy rules regarding the use of data. So open enrollment period is November 11th through December 9th. We've talked a lot about November 11th and I want to talk about December 9th. December 9th at midnight Eastern Standard Time is the absolute deadline for enrolling in DC HealthLink plan. There will be no, the system will not accept any late enrollment after midnight December 9th. Eastern Standard Time. So you have almost a whole month and we definitely don't want you to rush to make a decision. Um, you have lots of time to review your plan options, but just make sure that you have completed your enrollment by December 9th. So we've been working pretty closely with your um, Office of Payroll and Benefits and there's a lot of places to give for, uh, for you to get some assistance. Um, obviously you can contact your Office of Payroll and Benefits. There's also the um, open house uh, sessions for the next week that include with the carriers. We will also be there as well. In addition, we're gonna have uh, weekly on-site support hours with some of our DC HealthLink staff to help you through the application itself. If you have problems along the way, you don't understand um, where to go next or how to, what the information is that you're looking at, we can help you through all those things. Um, for uh, the actual dates and times of that, uh, you can contact the Office of Payroll and Benefits. Um, and then of course you can always reach out to our contact center. So thank you very much and I look forward to your questions later on. Okay, we've heard from the Office of Personnel Management and also DC HealthLink. We're now going to switch gears and have a very high level brief overview <laughs> regarding the four health carriers that will be represented in the health care exchange. Please note, we're not going to overlook any of your questions, but we do want to um, make sure that we do get an opportunity to ask as many questions as possible during the question and answer period. So we will begin with United Healthcare. Good afternoon. My name is David Smith. I'm the Vice President of Small Business for United Healthcare. And on behalf of United Healthcare, we're very proud to be here serving Congress. We're also exceptionally committed to the DC shop, and we take our role as a carrier extremely seriously. Um, there's a lot going on, and we want to provide you with insight as to how to make the best evaluation. On a personal level, this is my favorite topic, health insurance. So, and I've got a captive audience. So, uh, I am going to boil this down to a concise and clear view of United Healthcare in hopefully about five minutes. So we're going to move quick and address the large items. So getting going here, important consideration, broad brush. What do we need to be thinking about when you look at United Healthcare? Do I need access to a local or a national network? Local provider access is for members that are located in Maryland, D.C., and Virginia, and their providers are in that Citus area as well. National access, you've got access to United Healthcare's largest propriety national network in the country. The reason why I say proprietary is that it is our network, we own it. It is fully integrated and you don't need any uh, special ID card or process to access in-network providers in Texas, 
You access them just like you were here in Maryland or Washington, D.C. Um, the key question on this, though, is, is my provider part of United Healthcare's network? The answer to that is very likely yes. However, we do have to strongly recommend go to myuhc.com. In about two clicks, you can figure out how to get to find a doctor, look up your doctor, and that will confirm that your provider is in our network. Emergency coverage is covered uh, anywhere really in the world. So if that's a concern, um, that is how we address that. United Healthcare's local versus national. Half of our plans are on the local network, and that's optimum choice and optimum choice uh, preferred point of service. The national is United Healthcare Choice EPO, or exclusive provider organization, or the United Healthcare Choice Plus point of service. So half of the 80 plans from United Healthcare are going to be on local, the other half are going to be on the national. Do I need coverage for out-of-network benefits? It's another question you might ask. You might evaluate that from, do I have out-of-network coverage right now? Do I foresee myself needing out-of-network benefits in the future? Some physicians don't accept any insurance companies, uh, so that gives you a little bit more flexibility. Optimum Choice HMO and the United Healthcare Choice EPO provide in-network only benefits. So again, 40 of the plans there are going to be in-network only. 40 plans uh, are going to be out, provide out-of-network coverage as well. Optimum Choice Preferred Point of Service and the United Healthcare Choice Plus POS provide in and out of network coverage. The key is down here at the bottom. When searching for a physician at myuhc.com, you're going to have a drop down box where it's going to list all of these names that I just went through. You just pick on, you pick that particular uh, product and it will pull up the network for you. Uh, let's take that broad brush and now turn up the magnification, get a little bit more specific. Here is what you're going to see when you look at United Healthcare on the DC Shop Exchange. We have 10 gold plans available, 10 gold plan designs available. So you've got different coinsurance levels, different copays. Eight of them are copay plans that have a deductible and coinsurance. Two of them are the health savings account plans or a HSA program. Now we take those 10 gold plan designs and we offer them on all of our products. So you're going to have a lot of flexibility to take into consideration, do I want in-network only benefits? Do I want a national network? Um, and what type of plan design do I want? The reason why United Healthcare did this was because of the fact that some people access care a lot, some people have chronic conditions, some, ac some access care very little. And so we wanted to have that broad range of 80 plans to be able to provide um, solid coverage for everybody that's considering us and meet a wider range of health care needs. I'm not going to go through the entire graph here, but if you want sort of a synopsis of those components of in and out of network benefits, is the, is the network local or national, uh, that is going to be provided for you here. At the bottom is just something you want to keep in mind. Uh, some of you might have a uh, referral uh, type requirement with your existing coverage now. Those are really only part of the optimum choice plans, the optimum choice HMO, as well as the optimum choice preferred point of service. Optimum choice, I think the name you guys are going to recognize is MDIPA. So it's the same exact network, um, and that's the same type of uh, product as well. Pharmacy. Pharmacy has, taken, pharmacy has taken on a very important role in medical benefits. And this is key because pharmacy is probably going to be the first thing that many members access right away. It's also a highly utilized component of the medical plan. We have the primary plan that we offer is a traditional copay plan, uh, where you'll see it there, 104075. The key component here is, is that United Healthcare has a prescription drug list of all the medications that are used in the, it, by members today. We categorize those, all of those prescription drugs in certain uh, levels, and those levels we call tiers, tier one, two, and three. You're probably familiar with tier one, two, and three uh, with your existing plan. 
So depending upon where your drug falls on our prescription drug list, you're either going to have a $10, $40, or $75 copay. I want you to go over the far right here, um, member coinsurance. There's one correction I need to make for you. Up here on the screen, you will see tier level three, 40% capped at a $300 per script maximum. In your packets, it says 100. It's wrong. This is right. So we are going to correct that. Uh, the, the other plan that, that we sell is this one on the right, and it's basically saying we're going to combine a copay for tier one and then coinsurance for tiers two and three. Specialty drugs, these are somewhat new. There's a lot of technology going into this. High cost, high cost drugs, rather. Typically an injectable type of medicine. Um, very effective in many cases, but they are definitely more expensive. That has its own separate co uh, copay tier, 10 for tier one, 100 for tier two, 300 for tier three. I put it in the middle because it applies to both, to both plans. MyUHC.com, very quickly, this is the portal you're going to want to go to. It has all of the information for you to make informed decisions about cost and quality. It's going to help you make decisions about who are the best doctors for a particular uh, condition. It's going to help you find a provider, look up the status of your claim. Um, it's also going to be able to give you the chance to chat with a nurse for some kind of condition that you want real quick. Uh, advice for. The primary one is finding a doctor. The final thing I'm going to note on here is that many people are now saying, I want to know ahead of time what my costs are going to potentially be if I were to go, say, have a knee operation. We do have a very accurate pretreatment cost estimator. We load it in with our negotiated fees, and you can see the cost share that you would have for particular treatments and services. And then finally, um, we did want to provide you with an overview of the four most popular uh, FE uh, plans, uh, FEBHP plans, and they're going to be on the left-hand corner. And those left-hand corner are in your packet. And when you look at those, we we we, put, we took one of United Healthcare's plans, and we said if you have this existing plan, this is the comparable United Healthcare plan that you want to consider and it gives you a summary of the differences and benefits. But if you have one particular plan now, great quick way to be able to say, here's what I have now. What is the, the plan I want to consider from United Healthcare that is um, closest match? And with that, I'm moving on with John. Just want to reiterate, we will be taking questions shortly, so please um, email those to myhealthcare uh, at mail.house.gov. Good afternoon. My name is John Patrick. I'm with Kaiser Permanente. Thank you for having us here. We appreciate your service as a federal employee, and we are here to help you today. Today, I'm going to go over a very high level overview of this presentation. You have this with you, uh, and you can look at the details at your leisure. This is a fast ride, so hold on. So what we're going to cover real quick here is uh, our coverage area and where Kaiser Permanente uh, plans are. Then we're going to talk about our plans and benefits. Our, then we're going to move on to our rates. And then we're going to talk about why Kaiser, per, Kaiser per, Permanente may be important to you and why you should choose them. First, uh, we have eight gold plan offerings in the mid-Atlantic states, four of which are, lo are also offerings in our other regions. So we cover service, emergency services 24 hours a day worldwide, um, but these regions are the locations where our medical centers are located. Here in the mid-Atlantic states, we have, over 30 we have over 30 medical centers located in the region between Maryland, D.C., and Northern Virginia, five of which of these centers are full-service hubs that have urgent care, for, urgent care facilities, uh, labs, x-rays, uh, even a pharmacy open all 24 hours a day. It's a unique model where all of, most of your services can be found all under one roof. Your physician, your labs, your x-rays, your pharmacy, and all of it's connected through an electronic medical record that allows our, 
our different services to, to interact with each other while they're caring for you. We have two networks uh, that are available. The Signature Network, which is available in all Kaiser Permanente regions, and the Select Network that is only available here in the Mid-Atlantic States. The Signature Network, if you're a current FEHBP member of Kaiser Permanente, is the network that you're most uh, used to and, uh, and use most often. The Select Network is a network outside of our medical centers <coughs> where we contract with physicians uh, that, that uh, are network-based physicians. Now I'm going to talk to you about the plan that best maps to the gold DC Kaiser Permanente plan. So the, the FEHB plan that best maps under Kaiser Permanente that, that best maps. So under Mid-Atlantic States, the FEHBP high option and standard option best map to the Kaiser Permanente DC Gold 030 signature plan. And it's a mouthful. Um, but that's the plan that best maps to both the high and standard op options in mid-Atlantic states. In Northern California, for example, there are two different plans in the DC exchange that best map to Northern California. And as you can see, it's the DC Gold Plan 030 to the high option nor in Northern California and the DC Gold $1,000 deductible $30 copay to the standard or basic options in Northern California. So that should give you a good idea on how to use this chart. A key takeaway though from this is that all of our plans, all eight plans, include adult preventive dental and pediatric dental services. So that's unique to these eight plans. So to take a quick look and, and kind of an overview of what the copays look like in the DC Gold 030 plan, which means $0 deductible, $30 copay. Okay? And this, and then so you can see if you go to the doctor, it would cost you $30 for primary care, $40 for a specialty visit. And then the next plan, when I talked about Northern California and, a, and the plan that maps best to uh, their standard and basic options, that's the $1,000 deductible $30 plan. So here are the eight plans that are available, four of which are available in outside of Mid-Atlantic. And then I know this chart's a bit of an eyesore, but these are all the rates for the plans. It's a very difficult thing to show, especially on one page. But the key takeaway from this is uh, how you estimate your premium and the steps that, have been, that, uh, that Hannah has already gone over with you um, that you need to follow to go ahead and arrive at your premium. But uh, I can, what I can tell you about Kaiser Permanente is that you will find we are one of the lowest priced HMOs available to federal employees um, I, with, that has no deductible and no co-pays. For signature members, uh, and if you haven't been a Kaiser Permanente member before, you'll find Kaiser Permanente is a very easy plan to use. It's extremely convenient because everything is in one place. And all of that is connected through that electronic medical record that I mentioned before. You can do things like email your doctor, refill prescriptions online. We have an app for that. Um, and, uh, and, and so it's, it's a very easy plan to use. But when you're shopping for insurance, there are certain buying criteria that you need to consider. It's not just about price, benefits, and it's not just about price, benefits, and rates. Um, uh, you you got to consider things like quality, things like service. Uh, there are third parties out there that you can go to and look at all the health plans across the country and see how they rate in these things. So I, I highly recommend you go to a place called NCQA. National Committee for Assurance, Quality Assurance. They measure almost 500 health plans across the United States on how they perform in quality and service. CMS has a system, a five-star system, that also rates health plans on quality. JD Power, Consumer Reports, there's a lot of third parties out there that you can go to and look at to see how your health plan that you want to choose rates in quality and service. These are important things to consider when you're considering your health plans. So thank you for your time today. And I'm going to turn it back over to you guys, and we'll answer questions in a little bit.
We will next hear from Rebecca Calhoun with Care First and then Mike King with Aetna. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to come and, and listen to the benefits that are offered to you for 2014. Care First, um, for over 50 years, has been working with federal employees, and we have a very strong um, reputation for service and network and benefits, and 2014 is not going to be any different for you. We want to do whatever we can to make this transition um, painless and smooth, um, knowing that you have a lot of questions. And that brings me to the first slide in your packet. Um, we have, over the last couple of months, put a lot of things in place that will help you and will give you avenues to come to us and ask your questions. And we are encouraging you to please do that so that you have all the answers you need to make an informed decision. We have a dedicated congressional call line that has been set up. And on your handout here, it says 8.30 to 5, but just today we have made the decision to expand those hours, and it's going to be 8 to 6 going forward. So um, we urge you to please call in and talk to the people that understand these plans and can give you the answers. We also have a dedicated website that we have put in place. It's called congressandcarefirstbcbs.org. That website is a wealth of information for you. It has all the information on how the uh, plan that we are featuring matches up against the current um, federal uh, FEP standard and basic plans, as well as all the other options that we're offering, a total of 16 options on the gold medal level of the DC Health Link. Also shows you all the rates for each plan, shows you what the prescription drugs are under each of the tier levels. It allows you to find your doctor and see if that doctor is in the network. So there's a lot of information on there that we think will be very helpful to you. <clears throat> on that website as well is a congressional brochure, and that is in your packet, and I'm going to refer to it a couple of times um, during the next few minutes. So you might want to pull that out. It's fairly thick, but it is extremely helpful. It provides to you the benefits summary for each of the 16 plans that we're offering. And it gives you an example of how to calculate the premium. It gives you a little overview about Care First. It also shows you a three-column comparison of the uh, federal standard basic plans against that featured Blue Preferred plan. And that plan is a Blue Preferred PPO with a $1,000 deductible and uh, 180 coverage. And I'm going to go with, over with you in just a minute about why we are calling that the featured plan. We're also having daily live webinars. And uh, they are hosted by me, so they, they are very dynamic. Mm. But um, <laughs> <laughs> they, um, they're 30 minutes. They occur at 12, 1, 3, and 4 each day, Monday through Friday. There's a very short little overview at the beginning, and then we open up to questions that you have. So we urge you to call in to get those questions answered at any of those four 30-minute sessions during the day. And then, of course, we're going to be visible at all the health fairs that we've been invited to over the open season. All right, so I said that the featured plan that we're offering is a Blue Preferred PPO $1,000 deductible 180 plan. And uh, the reason for that is there are a lot of questions about why we chose that plan as our featured plan. The major reason is the network. The network that you have currently under the FEP standard and basic plan is essentially the same network that you will have under this Blue Preferred plan. We always urge you to go on to the website and look up your doctor and make sure that the doctor is still in the network because there can always be changes at the last minute. But essentially, the networks are the same. So that makes that plan something that you want to look at. It also gives you the security of being able to travel anywhere, not only in the country, but around the world and have benefits. And there's no referrals, so you don't have to worry about being tied down to having to get a specialist referral before you go to see them. 
And then if you have a doctor that's one of the very few that is not in our network, you certainly can go out of the network and you'll still have 80% coverage. And I'm on page two of the large brochure. I meant to point that out to you. That's the three column comparison. Um, so now I want to talk about this, this featured blue preferred plan against the FEP standard plan. Again, it's essentially the same networks, so that's a really good thing for you if you're using a certain provider. The, the out-of-pocket maximum against the standard plan is $1,500 less, so, and the deductible, although it's $650 higher, you need to keep in mind that that, that, that lower out-of-pocket max is a good thing for you because your prescription drugs will now go towards that out-of-pocket. So keep that in mind as we move through the benefits. We also um, offer the most utilized services at no charge once you've met the deductible. And currently you have lab diagnostic and x-ray at a 15% coinsurance. So that's a, a, an advantage to you. And then on the drug costs, a lot of the unpredictable drug costs have been eliminated because on this plan we've gone to co-payments. So except for the specialty drugs where we're still at a coinsurance level, all the other tiers are co-payments. Okay, on your next slide, I think in your, in your packet it says, um, on the second line, it says standard. You might want to change that to basic so you don't get confused later. <laughs> and we've changed that on HouseNet over the next day or so. So that will be updated. But this is a comparison of what the benefits are for that blue preferred plan against the basic plan. Again, you've got essentially the same network. The, there's a lower out-of-pocket, $2,000 lower. And the deductible in this one is $1,000, which I know is a big change. Um, we also offer the most utilized services at no charge once you get past the deductible. And on drug coverage, remember that the drug coverage is going to go to that out-of-pocket max. But on the non-preferred brand name drugs, they're going to be subject to a copay rather than the coinsurance you have today. On specialty drugs, you're still going to remain with a coinsurance. So let's review a little bit about what we're offering. We have 16 options on the DC Health Link. You have eight national plans. Those eight national plans have essentially the same provider network as you have today under the standard and basic plans. I do encourage you, though, to make sure you go on the website and double check your doctor if you're using a specific uh, provider. But that's very important differentiation. And I also want to point out that on your, in your packet that you have, these benefit summaries begin on page 6. And they go through page 21. And you can tell whether a plan is national or regional if you look in the top left corner in a little gold box, it will say national or regional. So there are eight national plans that share essentially the same network. Then there is one plan, and I believe it's the on page seven, um, where it says multi-state. That's a different network in 10 of our states uh, that Blue Cross and Blue Shield is operational in. So definitely, it's using that PPO basic uh, network, which is a little bit different than the network used in those other eight national plans. So if you're interested in that multi-state plan, you really do need to check your physician on uh, the website. Then there are seven regional plans. Regional plans are the plans where the network only accommodates those in Maryland, D.C., and Northern Virginia. It's the Care First Regional Network. Now, one thing I want to point out here is I know that the deductible change is a big change and a big transition. If you, if you are concerned about that, look at the benefits under the regional plans. There are a couple there that have very low deductibles, but just keep in mind that if you live outside of those three areas, Maryland, Northern Virginia, and D.C., something other than national is not going to work for you. So keep that in mind. 
And lastly, I want to go over a little bit of the rating. Hannah handled it so nicely about how that's all changing and, and how your calculation changes. I wanted to point out that in your packet, it's on page, um, page three of the full packet, you will see a calculation there, an example calculation. You'll also see the full rating table for this featured Blue Preferred PPO plan. Remember that if you're interested in any of our other plans, those are on our website and you can compare the rates right there. But if you want the accurate, absolute, what your, your share of the premium is versus the employer's share, you need to go through your process on the DC Health link or go on to OPM's Congress um, website. So I want to thank you for your time today and I just want to remind you that we do want your questions. We want to try to get you as educated as possible through this process. So please remember the, uh, the line that we have set up, the phone line, as well as our website and also those daily webinars. Thank you again for your time. Thank you. Well, good afternoon. Uh, as Carol mentioned, my name is Mike King with Aetna. And I'd first like to say thank you very much for taking some time. I think we're at a very exciting time here in the district with the way you're going to shop and actually enroll into benefits for the 2014 benefit season. So I um, uh, appreciate the opportunity to speak to you today. Um, and what I want to do today is, again, I know you've sat through a lot of information, so I want to keep it extremely high level for you as it pertains to yet in the programs that are going to be offered to you in 2014. However, there are a couple pieces of information I want to start out with to make sure that you guys take this information away with you. Aetna is offering eight programs um, this, this, coming, this coming year. Uh, Five of those programs are going to be regional programs. Three of those programs are going to be national programs. Of those eight plans, we're actually offering three different types of programs. The first type of program is an HMO, or a health maintenance organization, where you will have a regional network, you will select a primary care physician, and you will have referred care to specialists. We're also offering a mirror of those programs under our HN only, or what we would call our health network only. That program is an open access program where you do not have to select a primary care physician and you do not have to get a referral to seek specialty care. So again, the HMO and the HNO are very similar in scope in the sense that they utilize a regional network. However, there is a difference between one being open access and one requiring the selection of a primary care physician. The last program that we're offering is an OAMC, an open access managed choice. This is a point of service product that does have access throughout 47 of, the, 47 of the states, and we'll get into that in a little bit more detail. What we try to do here in the next several slides is show you, compared to the current Aetna programs that are offered today, what plans map in, what gold plans map to them in today's, or the new environment that's going to happen in 2014. So if you're currently in an open access HMO with Aetna today, here are the programs that are really going to be comparable to that. For those of you who are not participating in that program today, this is your opportunity to look at all the carriers and see what all the carriers are offering as far as benefits and plan designs. So as you see here, our Aetna Gold HMO, a 90% plan. Again, this program would be the restrictive network of DC, Maryland, and Northern Virginia. However, remember, at wherever you travel, in an emergency situation, you have care 24 hours a day, seven days a week, anywhere in the, anywhere in the world. For those of you who are out in some of the district offices, or maybe you're here working, but you do travel to a home state periodically throughout the year, for those, for those of you who are in that type of situation, I may recommend that you look at the Open Access Managed Choice Program, because that program is going to give you access in 47, in 47 different states. Again, remember, in an emergency situation, you have access anywhere across the, across the world. If any of you are currently in a high deductible or an HSA compatible program, we do have some programs that's, that are very similar to that in the new portfolio that we're offering in 2014. So if you're looking at those high deductible consumer directed plans, our open access 7050 program is a nice alternative uh, as well. Um, and, and there is a typo here, our Aetna Gold 
HMO 2070 is another HMO platform type program that gives you that HSA feel or high deductible feel. And then finally, any of you who are currently participating in the Aetna value plans today, you'll see the two plans that we've mapped there again, the open, the open access managed choice program, um, as well as, and again, I will reiterate, there is a typo here. It should be the Aetna Gold HMO 2070 that you can actually map into. A nice uh, spread of programs that are available to you depending on what your needs are from a medical standpoint and what your parameters are as far as your out-of-pocket costs and what you're looking to, to obtain. So we've gone through a lot of information over the last hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes, and we know you're not going to retain it all. So we've set up several different areas for you to get more information. From the Aetna perspective, you'll see the website that we have set up there. And under that website, you'll be able to get all the information and detailed benefit summaries on the, on the eight programs that Aetna will be offering in the upcoming year. You'll be able to search for pure, your providers, either here locally or nationally, if you are selecting one of the open access managed choice programs. And then most importantly, medications. Everyone's probably the most highly utilized benefit. Tends to be the first benefit that's utilized once you get onto a program. Um, that website will also give you the opportunity to search different medications that are covered under the program uh, that Aetna is offering, uh, offering today. And then finally, if, if you're still somewhat old school and prefer to actually pick up a phone and talk to someone on the line, we do have a dedicated service team and the numbers there are listed on the slide behind me. Uh, that service center or that um, dedicated service team is available 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through Friday. So again, if you're not finding something on one of the websites uh, or all the information that we'll be handing out and getting out to you, please do not hesitate to call that dedicated customer service team. They are prepared and ready and eager to answer any questions you may have. With that, I'm going to hand it back over to Carol and we'll start our Q&A. Thank you. Before we begin the Q&A, I just want to give you some information in case you are not able to stay with us during the question and answer period. We will have open houses in the Committee on House Administration hearing room beginning tomorrow, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. These, uh, these open houses, will be, there will be representatives from the four carriers to answer any more specific and detailed questions that you may have. We will also have drop-in sessions with the DC Health Link in the Office of Payroll and Benefits on November 14th, 21st, and the 25th. These drop-in sessions are to assist you with creating accounts, logging in, and doing a general search of the plans that are available in your area. And please don't forget that we have our annual health fair on December 5th in the Cannon Caucus Room 335, and that will be from 10 until 4 p.m. The carriers will be represented. We will also have representatives from the various FedVIP plans for dental and vision, supplemental if you choose to enroll, and also FSA, because you must re-enroll every year to participate in FSA. So with that, why don't we begin with a couple of questions. I'm expecting a child at the end of January, early February, and plan to add her to my insurance. Do I add her during open enrollment? or do I wait until she is born? Adding the child is a qualifying life event. You would add the child once the child is born and your health insurance will be effective in the month in which the child is born. We are also taking questions here in the audience. Please feel free to step up to one of the mics so that all may hear your question. We have them both down here towards the front. Where can I find the brochures for each of the providers enrolled in the DC Exchange? Currently, I have to go through the Gold Shop Qualified Health Plan spreadsheet provided by DC Health Link and individually select each plan. Instead, I would like to know where can I download each of the four providers' DC Gold Shop Plan brochures? So um, I, I believe the question is asking about information on each of the of the gold plans, and and one way to certainly get information on the plans is through the documents specifically provided by DC HealthLink. That includes a list of all plans with some basic information and links to the summary and benefits and coverage that Hannah went over earlier. 
Also during open enrollment when employees are shopping on DC Health Link and comparing plans, there will also be access to all of the plan information including the summary and benefits of coverage during that process as well. I will now take a question from the gentleman. Thank you. Um, I live in Northern Virginia and I have a daughter who attends college in Southwestern Virginia. Would you recommend that I look at a, a local plan or a national plan in order to maintain her coverage? All right, so I'll start then. Okay. All right, so the, the you live in Northern Virginia, the daughter is in Southwest Virginia, but still in the state. Yes. Okay, so um, our local network encompasses the entire state of Virginia, so it's pretty broad for uh, outside of, of Virginia. So uh, if that is the only need, that you might be very well served with just a, you know, the, the local United Healthcare network. But that's going to be different for you guys. Yeah. Yeah, so as far as south, <clears throat> we go as far south as Fredericksburg with medical centers. So our coverage goes down to there. So it should be in a situation where she'd be covered for any emergencies. And then there's a travel benefit as well um, that she would qualify for. But uh, she wouldn't get regular doctor's visits in, a, in that area for Kaiser Permanente. Under the regional plans with Care First, we have something called away from home care where you can enroll a dependent who's going to be away from home for 90 days or more into that plan. You work with our member services area and then they're in a temporary, um, in an HMO for a temporary period. And, and again, on the Aetna side, you could actually look at it either program because on the HMO local network, you're still going to have access to, uh, for, from a student standpoint, have access out of area. Thank you. Yes, sir. So you can enroll in the DC Health Shop during the open enrollment period or within 30 days of a qualifying life event. Is loss of FEHBP benefits on December 31st of this year considered a qualifying life event? In this case, no, because you are um, being allowed to enroll during open season. The reason why you're terminating on 1231 is to allow your benefits to be effective on January 1. So it will not be deemed as a qualifying life event. We have a question. Why am I required to buy a gold plan? Why am I prohibited from purchasing a silver or bronze plan? Hannah? Or Alan? Yeah, yeah, I can, I can take that. And I alluded to that in my, my remarks. Under the design of the, um, of the shop, employers wishing to offer multiple choice of options and carriers uh, have to choose a single metal tier level and then offer all the plans within that. So given the comparability of the gold level to the current FEHB, the gold level is the, the only option uh, available. So you will not, when you get into the DC Health Link site, after you enroll, you won't have access to those other plans. Sir? Um, if you get your insurance through the DC shop um, and you don't get a plan that offers dental or eye coverage, are we still eligible um, for like the dental and eye that's used to be offered through like the FEHB and such? Yes, you're still um, eligible for vision and dental under FedBIP and you would enroll in um, benefits.com. If you're currently enrolled, that enrollment will stay intact if you are fine with the plan that you currently have. Okay, and I have one other question. Um, which plans are the more of the pro-life plans than non-elective abortions? Hannah? So we have um, uh, some health plans on DC Health Link that include coverage for elective abortions and some plans that do not. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. The plans that do uh, that do include coverage for elective abortions include all of the United Healthcare plans, um, all of the Kaiser Permanente plans, and all of the Care First plans, except for the one that is the multi-state plan, and that's in the name of the plan. So those are the plans that cover um, uh, elective abortions. The plans that do not cover elective abortions are all of the Aetna plans and the Care First multi-state plan. And again to distinguish between the Care First plans and the multi-state Care First plan, it's multi-state in the name of the plan. 
Okay, thank you. We have a question. If a congressional staff member will be covered under their spouse's non-federal job health plan for 2014, is there any action necessary by the staff member during the health, uh, during open enrollment? If you are designated to be covered under the D.C. shop, we here at the CAO will automatically terminate your coverage on 1231. There is nothing that the employee will have to do. What we will advise is that if you are going on a spouse's plan that is not FEHB, that you contact payroll and benefits and speak to a retirement counselor, particularly if you plan on having a long Federal career. Here we, uh, yes, sir. Where can I find information about how the plans cover medical devices, equipment, and supplies outside of just regular prescriptions? So that information is part of the summary and benefits coverage. Um, so there's a standardized format for that, and I think it's usually like on the third or the fourth page. It's a standardized um, area where they have to um, provide some information on their coverage of durable medical equipment and other items like that, including any exclusions. I just want to add that if you do look at that and if you do still have additional specific questions about coverage, you should contact the carrier for that specific plan to get additional details. Yes, sir. I, unless, I, unless I'm wrong, I was under the understanding that the family rates have not been published yet. Do you have any updates on when you expect those to be available? <coughs> so all of the rates for DC HealthLink, um, you will see as soon as you're able to, as soon as open enrollment begins. The reason um, there is no rates published is, I mean, we're looking at uh, for 112 plans and up to 30, it's 35, I believe, age rates per plan. You're looking at almost 4,000 rates for just singles and then families are all the com you know the combinations of the two um, based on the family composition so you'll see the exact rates for you and your family structure on um, starting november 11th as soon as you log on are we using free tax or post-tax dollars to pay for our premiums i can take that it's it's pre-tax uh, as as was alluded to earlier your premium contribution will be withheld from your pay, payroll deduction, and just like now, it will, be cons it will not be taxable to you. Would my spouse quitting their job be considered a qualifying event where I could get him enrolled mid-2014? Yes, um, a spouse losing coverage is considered a qualifying life event. And as Hannah stated before, you'll have 30 days in which to enroll that spouse into your plan. We did receive an email that a current participant in FSA feds received a notice indicating that paperless reimbursement would not be available to them in 2014 should they re-enroll and they are in the exchange. Can you expand on that, Alan? <clears throat> the, the paperless uh, reimbursement will not be available with the shop carriers as it is with the OPM contracted FEHB carriers. Um, the FSA Fed's uh, benefit is, of course, still available to you, but that one particular feature uh, will not be active. Uh, we will look at that, and that might be an enhancement that we can do in subsequent years. I understand that purchasing insurance on the D.C. shop qualifies as the continuous coverage required for five years prior to retirement. Does the insurance purchased on the D.C. shop have to be the gold OPM subsidized plan? Yeah, yes. Um, and if you look at the slide five in my, my chart where you see that the underpinning of all of this is the FEHB, uh, in order for it to count towards FEHB covered coverage, uh, it has to be um, uh, coverage that we would provide the government contribution. And of course, that's only for the gold plans in the DC shop. If you select an individual uh, exchange plan uh, or if you go outside of the exchange and, and select a um, private coverage, no government contribution is payable and the time spent there does not count towards the five years. We have some 
questions regarding security. What assurances do we have that the personal information we enter into the DC Health Link site, Social Security, date of birth, et cetera, will be secure? DC HealthLink has several layers of data security, both from a technical standpoint as well as from our privacy and security policy. Um, additional details on our privacy and security policies can be found on dchealthlink.com as well for folks who are interested. How would COBRA be handled under the exchange? Um, COBRA is not an option under the exchange. What will happen under the exchange is that, say, for example, if you terminate on January 4th, your coverage will extend all the way through January 31st. You will have an opportunity to enroll in an individual, an individual market plan with the DC exchange or the exchange in your state. Is the Fed VIT open enrollment the same period as the DC shop for eye and dental coverage? Yes, FedVIP has the same open enrollment period as your FEHB and DC shop open enrollment period, which will start November the 11th and will end at 1159 on December the 9th. Hannah, can you just give the website again where employees can check for premiums and plan information? So starting on, on Monday, November 11th, you can go to dchealthlink.com and click on the Apply Now and create your account as an employee. You enter the, that pretty basic information about yourself and or your family members, and then you can see the cost um, for you and your family members for all of the 112 gold plans um, available to you. Okay, we have one more question. If staff sign up for another state exchange outside of the DC shop and are therefore ineligible for the employer contribution, can they receive the premium tax credit and or cost sharing assistance if eligible? Generally the answer to that is no because the Federal Employees Health Benefit Program both the existing 256 plans and the 112 shop plans all provide essential coverage um, and so that you would not be eligible. There may be some extreme sort of one in a million circumstances where uh, the, the uh, total pay and income might create some eligibility, but for all intents and purposes, the answer is no. Do we have any additional questions from the floor? Uh, so I have a question. I currently have a second job, and at my second job, uh, they provide health care insurance for part-time employees. Truthfully, it's a little cheaper than um, what I'm getting here at the house, and so I'm thinking about doing that. But say in March or April, I decide to leave uh, the company and therefore don't have that health insurance anymore, can I enroll then into DC shop? Pam, we have a Pam question. Law? I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm hearing two different things. Can you repeat that? I apologize. Of course. Um, I currently have a second job and yes. get health insurance through them. Um, so I'm thinking about not coming on to uh, DC shop, but say next year sometime I choose to leave uh, that employment, but I'm still employed in the house. Can I then come to DC shop to get my health insurance there? Yes, because it's considered a qualifying life event as loss of coverage. Okay. I Alan, apologize. Can you, <laughs> Alan, can you give the site for the calculator on OPM's um, health insurance page? Uh, yes, it's, it's the uh, second to the last um, link on the OPM resources page in my slide. It's uh, too many words for me to cite, but you can, you can catch it there. Um, also, uh, beginning uh, Monday, when you're on the DC Health Link site, you'll see <coughs> opportunities to hyperlink to it from there as well. 
If you do have a detailed or complex question that you need answered regarding your health care, we do invite you to attend one of the open houses, Committee on House Administration Hearing Room 1310, beginning tomorrow and all next week, except for Monday, from 10 until 2. These briefings, uh, these open houses, excuse me, will be staffed by representatives from the four health carriers who are here today. Don't forget about the health care uh, fair on December 5th. I'd like to have closing remarks from our CAO, Dan Strodel. Thank you very much for your attendance this afternoon. Dan. Uh, again, thanks for, for everyone coming over, uh, those folks who are participating um, uh, electronically. Uh, this is an information push we started today. Thank you to our panelists, uh, to our CAO staff, to the Committee on House Administration again. Uh, please continue to check HouseNet, and I'll try not to, but I may have to send uh, a few more emails to everybody. Again, thank you very much.